This video is aimed at our existing clients that have the single journey module, often known as the Lithopod Mailroom uh, or, or such a similar description. Um, it could also be applicable for pharmacy deliveries, uh, hospital goods inwards, uh, and also pathology if you're tracking individual items. So it's about A to B items. In this video, we're going to look at the differences, uh, the new features in 2018, uh, the main ones, not all of them. So let's take a quick look. One of the first things you're going to notice is that on the website, where you actually go to the reports and the search area, they look radically quite different. That's been brought about by a couple of things people have said to us. They said, first of all, Mike, we'd like to have um, an ability to change the column layouts and things like that more easily. Secondly, they want it where everybody wants all the screen to be utilized. They'd like an easier search box. And when they're exporting data, they want to export all the data, not just what's actually displayed on the screen. So let me show you a couple of those uh, features. First of all, if I go and show you the search function, let's say we have something that's come in for finance department and it's on Royal Mail. Before we'd have to go to multiple search boxes. All I'm going to do now is type in finance and Royal and just hit the enter key. And what it's done is it goes across all the fields you have selected to immediately find anything that matches a cross column. So it's that single search box rather than multiple search boxes. So we think that is going to be basically um, a real time saver for most people. Um, and it's going to make training a lot easier for people as well. Another thing we can do uh, is we can actually use detailed column filtering if you wish. So in any column, you'll notice this little key feature here. If I click on that key there, it will say contains. So if I, for example, say, uh, type in Evans and just hit the enter button. I can filter on that one column if I wish. I could filter on Amazon items as well. So I can do in column filtering as well should I choose to. And for the very advanced types, um, some accountants quite like this type of feature. If I click in the bottom left here, I can create a filter by clicking on things like the plus, and then I can see any of my columns that I have visible. And I could say, for example, courier contains the word, say, Royal for Royal Mail. So I've got the three different types of filter but for most people in the mail room, we, 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 we generally have a feeling that they'll simply go up and use the single box there. The things people loved about the um, grids are still there, the ability to sort on a column and group on a column. So for example, if I click on the person column here, it's now going from A to Z. If I click on it again, it will go Z to A. I can do that on any column. Equally, I have my same group by abilities in here as well and I can group on as many fields as I wish there to be. The export now goes to Excel comma separated value and Adobe PDF and it will export all of the data not just the data um, that's actually displaying on the grid. The other thing you'll notice is that the the group by feature and the number of records is no longer limited. So you can have as many records being returned as you wish. It very cleverly returns a page of data to display on the display and then information about what other data there is available comes back down. What that means is when you go from a page to another page, it does so incredibly quickly. But at the same time, you're not limited. So all the group by information and filtering options all come down. 
So that ability, we no longer have to limit you to that um, particular setup. Now, another clever feature we have is something called a live view. And if I just show you what that looks like. So in my time view here, I can go to a live view, which filters the last seven days, but it will then show me new information as and when it comes in. So basically this web page will be updating itself. I think it's about every 30 seconds or something like that. Now it's restricted to staff manager logins. It does put a little bit of an overhead onto the server, but it's not massive. We were not going to open this up for everyone because we have a hundred users doing it. The obviously is going to start eating into server performance. But um, at the same time, if you've got 10 staff managers, it's really not a problem. And it really is quite nice to actually see data changing in front of your eyes. I'm just going to go back and just select um, stuff we're doing for today. And I'll just show you something else we can do. If I click on the grid layout column here, what I can do is I can um, basically make changes very quickly and easy, easily to the um, column headers. So I can rename a column header to be anything else and I can make something visible or invisible very easily and then save the layout that then applies across all the reports that you might have. So we'll do that for you. It's simply, it's been made to be a little bit easier than before. If I, so that's the main, for the main sort of change here. If you go to any of the others, for example, if I go to uh, POD list, you'll see all of the reports have um, a similar format. Now the actual tracking reports, if I just click on one of those here, these have changed format. These are now very graphical. The other thing we can do is in this top column here, we can see we can show delivered stages only, it grouped by packages, or the full tracking data. Now, a lot of people, when they ask for a tracking report, they're only interested in one thing. Has somebody got it and who is it? And what we've done is made the ability, given you the ability to have a report that just shows that information, the pertinent point, who's got it, um, and that's it. If you want the full tracking data, you can go on to here and select that and the grid will refresh to show any other information you may require at the same time. You can also export it to a wider variety, a wider variety of export formats if you wish to. So the tracking report has um, changed. That's probably about the main changes um, on the actual website itself. So what I'm gonna do now is to log off and log on this time as an administrator to show you some other really cool features. Some really nice features have been added in terms of email functionality. If I click on, first of all, all items, if I click on a new email, first of all, there is a new trigger condition. And what we've added in here is the ability to say, when damage is reported, where it's occurred before we've booked it in. So this enables us to send an email automatically when a member of the mailroom team has recorded damage that's obviously occurred by the courier. So they've noticed it's been opened or it's been damaged. And now an email can automatically be triggered. Another thing we've done is we've had the ability to restrict it to a particular department or company. So for example, I can say this email should only apply when it's an item going to the legal department. They're particularly going to be particularly fussy about things that have arrived opened, I would imagine. Um, so you can make it filter it. So you've got every, applies to everything coming in for everybody. I can filter it by the entry point into the building. So for example, I could say, this applies to items that have come in from the mailroom or via reception in this example, or if I untick that box applies to everybody, I can then say it applies to everything, to items to a particular person or for items to a particular department. 
And those are the main changes with what we call the traditional emails you've already had. And the format to that has, um, has changed slightly. Emails being sent in DeliveryPod 2018 have changed format substantially. And the ability to send emails when things haven't happened, um, perhaps as you plan them to, or when things have perhaps returned to the mailroom shelf and been there for two weeks, you now have got an ability to send emails on those conditions as well. And we'll come on to the exact configuration of that in a moment. What I'm just gonna show you here is the look and the feel of some of these, uh, the, the new email formats. So this one um, we set up to say when something's within 20 minutes of being late, but hasn't been scanned onto a mail trolley or a delivery vehicle to let somebody know, which can either go to the contact or to the mailroom manager or supervisor, or potentially the person it's addressed to and the mailroom manager. And that gives you an ability to do something about it before it becomes late. So it helps you to make sure your service level statistics are going to be really good because you've got advanced warning. So the format here, you have the tracking report can now actually be attached to the email. Um, we can set it up based on the time within either before or after the due time. The link itself, if I click on that link, will take the person straight to their tracking report. Now links can be switched on and they can be switched off. So if you have a security concern about links being in your email, that feature can be switched off. So that was danger of items being late, items received in the mailroom, items for IT. So this particular one's been set up that only applies for items for the IT department. No matter who the person is, if it's your IT department, it will send an email. And the idea behind that is certain departments may want to have the ability to come down and find something straight away or at least be aware it's come in but you may not want that email going to other departments or other businesses tracking reports here um, there's probably not a lot of data here but basically you can say each person or each department can be sent at a set time in the day or their tracking reports um, if I just look at this one, this is a multiple tracking report. Again, there's only one item on here, but that might be, normally be a collection of reports. Uh, manager's summary reports. These um, will basically show you at particular times in the day you set up, how many items have come in, how many have been delivered. The idea behind that is it um, will show you, for example, you've got a really busy day, you've got three times as many parcels have come in, um, and you can find that out fairly quickly in the day, even if you're not actually at the mailroom. Um, this is a, a, an instant here of a courier's delivered an opened or damaged item. So if I click on my tracking report, I can actually see, yeah, they've delivered that open, etc., etc. So. And again, you can just do make it you know however you want it to be um, so let's go and have a look at the actual email setup so you can get an idea of the new capabilities I backlogged in as an administrator and we'll notice on the email menu we've always had this one email all items and email single items we've got this new one time-based email so let's click on that and see what that does <coughs> first of all we can create what we call tracking report emails in some environments a customer may say to you i'd like a copy of all my tracking reports sent at five o'clock every day and this enables us to do that i'm just going to have a look at this particular setup here so this one is saying that's the title of the email, your tracking reports for the day. We've set the report range to be on the day, so basically today. The attachment type, you can either have none or PDF or Excel or both. The next bit is the from address, and then you've got to decide who it's going to go to. 
and that's typically going to the contact um, or to a specific person. So if it's going to a company for all of their items or to a department for all of their items, you wouldn't tick that box. You would simply put, um, you would enter the department head's name uh, in this box or the company email address in this box here. What we then do is we type in our message and then we go down and start to apply the filters. The filters I could say would be first of all where it originated from. So I could say it should only apply to items to the mailroom. I could say it applies to everything apart from for example items that came in in reception. I can then say this applies to everybody which I've got at the moment or I could say it applies for say IT department or finance or it could be a separate customer it could be a GP surgery alternatively I could say it applies to a particular person such as Nina Evans Joe Kellett and build up a list of individual people and that would take all of the tracking reports for Nina and Joe and email it to the person we have in the to address thing here. I can exclude things, for example, that have been delivered, um, things on trolleys and whatever. So you could actually turn this into here are your tracking reports for the items that haven't been delivered, for example. And then finally at the top right, I can set the time of day that the email should be triggered at and then the days of the week that the trigger should apply. So here, I don't want to send something on Sunday. So I just click on cancel on that. So that enables you to automate the sending of tracking reports. Now, probably a more useful thing in most mail rooms, instead of saying, sending all the tracking reports, which could be a fairly big attachment, what you may have is a department or a company saying, I'd like a summary, please, of what you've done for the month, the week, or the day. And this is what this does. If I click on edit, I've set this up, for example, for, for the legal department who says, I want to have a daily summary, please. And that way they can just check that they're happy with everything. Again, I can set my date range, what type of attachment I want, who it go, who is the from email addresses, who it's going to. I could actually send it to the, the contact. Um, I can filter based on where it's originated in the building or who's basically sending it. I can filter or not filter if you like, it could apply to everybody. Or I could make it apply only for items for the legal department or any other department or company. Or I could make it apply for specific contact. Again, I can filter some more about whether to include items that are delivered or whatever that might be. And then I can say when I want that email to actually be sent. It's a very powerful utility. So if you're in something like a tenanted building, what you can do is you can say to each of those tenants, we're going to email you at five o'clock with a summary of everything we've done for you for the day. Um, equally on the previous one, you may say we can send to you tracking reports. You might make that applicable only for one business. Perhaps it pays an extra fee based on that. But if they're in, for example, finance or dealing with um, what called secure information like market research or something like that, they may be very happy to pay extra to have that kind of service because what they would be worried about is a very important document going missing. Um, but anyway, this gives you the option. A personal favourite of mine is what we call time triggered emails. I think these are so useful, um, I just love them to bits. Um, in fact, when I was testing, I couldn't couldn't set enough of them. So if I just click and show you what this does. We always asked about um, service level reporting. And, and the thing that strikes me about this is that all service level reporting really does is tell you how good or bad you've been. And what really is needed is something that stops you from being bad. Something that tells you there's something going wrong at the moment, but I'm telling you, so you've got time to do something about it. And that's exactly what this email does. As all the same features of the other one, of the other emails, we can put a title, select who it's going to, filter based upon where it came into the building and things like that, whether it applies to 
everybody, a single person or a department or company. Um, and some people will like that. They'll say, well, actually, I need to have a really high service level for, say, the operating theatres, because if I've not delivered something to a theatre and an operation's cancelled because of that, because I'm late, that's going to have bad health consequences for the person being operated on, potentially huge legal bills for the hospital, and then maybe legal bill on me because I'm the one that didn't deliver it on time. But anyway, we can then go up and there's top right, we can say, I want to send this email, say 20 minutes before it's due. And I may then say, I don't want to worry about stuff that's on a mail trolley or vehicle, because I know that's out for the delivery run. But anything else that I've not yet loaded onto a trolley or a vehicle, I want alerts come to me, the mailroom manager, because I need to do something about this pretty quick. And this enables you to do it. Now, another thing you can also do, you can have a very different email and say, I'm gonna send something five minutes after it's late. Or you could say, I'm gonna send something 14 days after it's due, when it still hasn't been delivered because that's gonna catch out all of the items I've got. But I've asked, you know, can anyone expecting this parcel come and collect it? And it's now been 14 days since that email went. And this is gonna give, warn me or trigger to me that I perhaps need to consider shipping this back to the person that sent it. Or it might be a nagging email. Let's say you're running a collection service in a tenanted building or a collection service for a particular department or for private mail. And that's a good point. A number of people have asked us about, can we have a collection service, but only, 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 only when we've taken a view, it's a personal item rather than a business item. What you can do is you can put the people you want into a department called personal items, for example and then have your emails apply to all the people that belong to personal items department. And therefore you can have a collection service and send them an email to say, come and collect it. And that won't apply when it's booked in for them in their normal department as business. So basically, again, there you can use this one to say 14 days after we sent you come and collect it. Another email saying you haven't come and collect it. These items are going back to supply if you're not collected in seven days. You might then have another one that if it gets 21 days, just tells you to ship it back to a supplier. So again, it gives you that flexibility to um, do things based upon time. And finally, the manager's uh, report. And if I click on this one, basically this is just gonna give you a summary of everything about the mailroom. And it's going to email it to whoever you want at set times of the day. So you might have a mid-morning report, which is probably gonna show you whether it's been a really busy day with the couriers delivering far more items to you than you expected. You might have maybe a two o'clock report, which is gonna give you early indications of how we're doing on delivering that backlog. And then maybe a close of day report to see how many items have we still not delivered at the end of, end of play. You now have set as many of these as you like. And of course, they're gonna to get to you whether you're in the building or not in the building. So you might be doing a customer visit or something like that, but you can still see how the mailroom's getting on, but you're getting periodic updates. It kind of is as simple as that, really. When you go to the contacts tab, uh, the contacts menu, you'll see that we have contacts as normal in a slightly different um, grid than you're perhaps used to. But also we've got this new companies we could read companies or department really and what that's about is we can say when somebody new starts in say the finance department i want this bit of the address to be filled in so if i just edit that you can create that yourself so i've got i want to be able to select that from the drop down when that's selected for the new contact all of this stuff gets put in for them so here for example i'm saying the name and address but also the last bit of their email address. So all they really need to do is enter the person's name and the first bit of the email address. And that's a, gonna be a much quicker way of actually entering the contact information for new starters. 
Another thing we have is utility that helps us link into things like Active Directory and other data sources more easily. But let me just show you how this companies thing actually works. If I go into uh, the normal PC booking in utility and click on new contact, as I select a um, legal department, all of this information is filled in for me, leaving me simply to say, um, Sid James, and then add in and just click on save. So it makes adding in new contacts very easy, but it also does another thing that it keeps the spelling and use of capitalization consistent within the system rather than relying on mailroom staff um, keeping it consistent themselves. The self-service portal isn't necessarily a new feature um, to some of you because you may have this in your version but you may not have been aware of it or actually used it and hence um, we're going to talk about it now. So what is the self-service portal? That's probably a good starting point. Well, let's imagine you work in a department say customer services and you sent lots of mail and parcels and you have a lot of queries and you're phoning up the mailroom all the time. Has this arrived? Has that arrived? The courier says this has arrived at nine and it's half past nine, it's not here, where is it? Um, first of all, they're obviously part of your business. You kind of want to service them and hope that, um, you know, keep them satisfied and happy. But at the same time, you've got a mailroom to run and only a certain number of people to deliver the mail. And while they're answering the phone and doing all those queries, the mail is stacking up behind you. One option is to give that department a department access to uh, the self-service portal. So let's have a look at what that does. So I've got a, um, a log on of customer services. And they can basically log on and see everything for customer services. So in this particular case, you can see multiple people's items, but only where they belong to customer services. They can access their tracking reports here on the side very easily, and they've got a search facility as well. So we could say, for example, um, they're expecting something to come in um, on Amazon. So let's say Amazon, and it was a letter. Oh, actually, so pass is more realistic for Amazon. Hit the enter button, bang. They can very quickly see everything for Amazon that has passed in the description. And let's say they want to add in, it's also for Nina. They can do whatever search they like across the columns. And when they see um, the item, they can click on report and access the information themselves. So we can see it's come in, but it's not yet actually been scanned onto a mail trolley or anything of those items and, and, and anything of the ilk. Okay, so the self-service portal um, can enable a department to look at everything there. So that was a generic logon for that department. You can create logons that um, are company-wide or for example, for town basis, if you had a store manager and had all your stores on there, they could see all the stores for say Southampton. Um, you could do that as well. Um, what I will do is to log off and actually just show you um, a, a different logon for the moment. So let's just go back and let's go and do a self-service logon. And let's this time um, go and enter for Andy Crook. In our example, Andy works in the um, in in the legal department, and as we can see here, he can only see items for him, so he can't see other items for the legal department. So let's um, just go back to the website, and I'll just show you how we actually set that up. 
All the passwords, by the way, are just for this video. They're not actually real. Um, so if you type them in, you won't get very far. So if I click on the self-service portal access, and let's have a look at, say, John Sugden here. I can give him a username. I can say his email. I could either put a department code in there and say everything for his department. Or I'm, for this one, I'm just going to say John Sugden is his username. I'm going to allow him to access the self-service portal by clicking this box. I'm going to give him, to give him a par, uh, password of John1964 colon colon. And I'm going to say the personal name must match what it's been booked in under. The company or department name must match and the rest of the address must match. If I were to untick this, John can actually see everything that matches the rest, such as the department code or the, sorry, the department name or the company name. So since John is in IT support, he will be able, would be able to see everything that's come in for IT support. But he couldn't see what's come in for the finance department, for example. And by using this set of rules, you can enable people to have as narrow or as broad a view but it is read-only access. They can't adjust anything or do anything or create any damage. It is purely read-only access. Now there's no license fee to pay for this. So we've got 10,000 people who want to give access to. It's still completely free. Obviously, if they're all accessing at the same time, you might have to up the spec of the server, or if it's with us, we might have to charge you a little bit more money for a more powerful server to cope with that, but it's unlikely. And that's really the self-service portal. It helps you to give people a better service by giving them 24 hour a day access to information. People generally prefer to access information themselves. Um, certainly I do. I'm, you know, I, I don't really like asking. I much prefer to do, try and find the answer myself. And at the same time, it hopefully gets people off of the back of the mail room by letting the queries be answered to some extent by themselves. Now, some people will take a view that, actually, I don't want to give people access to that. It just makes more questions and queries for me. If that's the case, that's fine. Don't give anyone a username or password. They'll never know it exists. So it's very much your choice, but it is a nice, powerful feature of DeliveryPod that's there should you want it.